So no matter how you choose to cook chicken thighs, they're probably gonna turn out pretty good. But each of the three techniques that I'm gonna cover today fit into my life in their own unique way. And it's kind of like a choose your own mission depending on the night. So let's start with the quickest method, which is also the one that I use the most. First up is the grilled mayo marinade, also known as my I'm starving and need to whip something up right now. So to start, get out a single boneless skinless chicken thigh and flip it over. You'll notice that one side is higher than the other, so using my knife, I just make some slices to flatten that, which will promote even cooking. Once it's cut, I add a little sprinkle of salt on both sides, not too much because the mayo marinade is gonna have some salt, then add a dollop of mayo to the thigh and add the spices. Now obviously you can season this with whatever you want, but my default is usually a sprinkle of oregano, some red pepper flakes, and garlic powder. Then you just mix the mayo and the spices so it coats the exterior of the chicken, and we are ready to cook. So set a pan over medium high heat, and then once that's hot, Add the chicken thigh down and let it cook until it starts to brown. No extra oil is needed here. I like to flip this three or four times while cooking to help develop some even browning and I'm shooting for roughly 175 degrees Fahrenheit internal. Now while this is cooking, you need to figure out a big question. How am I serving this? Now there's no shame in just eating it plain, but usually my top three are as a sandwich, over salad, or with some leftovers like some rice. Today I'm going the sandwich route, so I've got a bun, some lettuce, tomato, pickled onions, feta cheese, and a little vinaigrette. But back at the stove, the chicken should be done, and just look at this beauty. Browned and crispy, but still really juicy. To assemble the sandwich, I place the tomatoes down first, followed by the lettuce, the pickled onions, and a little drizzle of the vinaigrette for some lubrication. Now top that with the chicken, some feta cheese, and a bit more vinaigrette over the top before topping and slicing. Let's eat. So like I mentioned, the mayo marinade for me is old reliable. If I have a chicken thigh in the fridge and I need a meal now, this is what I'm going with. It's done and ready in like 10 minutes and it always is delicious. Throw any number of spices you want and mix it with that mayo. It's gonna taste really good. And again, you can make it into sandwiches like I did. You can throw it over salads, roasted vegetables, or just mix it with leftovers in the fridge. Super easy technique, and if you are worried about the mayo taste, it doesn't taste like mayo. Um, anyone I've had try this technique has all raved about it, and it's one of the most game-changing techniques that I've learned over the past couple of years. That being said, amazing technique, but let's move to method number two, which is something I also use quite a bit, and it's one where if I need some leftovers, this is the method I'm going to, and I don't have a great name for it, but I'm just gonna call it broiled nuggets. The broiled chicken nuggets are also known as my make a big batch that I can store in the fridge for multiple meals method, and it couldn't be simpler. So to start, get out four boneless skinless chicken thighs and just chop them into cubes or any shape you like, and then toss that chicken into a bowl. To season, first add a sprinkle of salt and a sprinkle of MSG before mixing that together with the chicken. Now we have another decision point, what type of marinade? So we can do the mayo like we just did, a yogurt marinade as I did in my Kati roll video, or an oil-based one, which is what I'm gonna do today. So to the bowl, add a drizzle of oil along with some cumin, smoked paprika, chili powder, onion powder, and garlic powder for mixing that together with your hands. Now, very important step here, evenly spread that chicken out onto a baking sheet. And this is a big key. If you overcrowd the pan, it's gonna steam the chicken instead of getting those beautifully brown bits under the broiler. So once spread out evenly, just toss that whole sheet into the oven on the broiler, and you're gonna want this on the highest or second highest rack so it has close access to the heat source. Then let these cook for roughly 10 minutes where we are looking for some nicely browned and crispy edges. And again, we have to decide how we're using this. So on the channel, NYC Halal Car Chicken with Rice, Chicken Curry, or Katsu Rolls are all good options, but today I'm going for a burrito, so I've got all my burrito fixings. Back at the oven after about 10 minutes, the chicken should be done. And lastly, I like to spritz some lime juice over the top and just mix it up, and these babies are so delicious. To assemble the burrito, I have a flour tortilla that I melted some cheese on first, Next, I hit it with a smattering of some beans, the lettuce and tomatoes and some sour cream. Next, place a heaping amount of that chicken over the top, a little more sour cream and pickled onions, and we are eating now.
Let's get into this thing. That right there, one of the best burritos I've made in a while. But anyway, I'm not a huge fan of meal prepping like individual meal containers and then just like heating it up. But this is kind of what I like to do. I'd rather make just kind of a big amount of a protein that I can turn into different meals throughout the week. You know, it could be salads, tacos, um, burritos, any number of things. Again, it's kind of a control your own mission. Any number of seasonings, mayo marinades, oil-based marinades, yogurt marinades. And I'll link a couple of those recipes down below if you guys are looking for more inspiration on how to use this technique, but definitely give this one a shot. That being said, there is one thing we've been missing with the first two techniques that makes thighs so good, and that is the crispy skin. So let's break down technique number three. Method number three is pan seared then baked chicken thighs, also known as impress your friends or family into thinking you did a lot more work than you actually did. Now, this is not to say we aren't going to do any work because I highly do recommend deboning the thighs and dry brining these overnight because whoever you serve these to is going to appreciate the hell out of you for doing these extra steps. So to start, we're going to use bone in skin on chicken thighs and flip the thighs skin side down and then using a sharp boning or poultry knife, just cut along the thigh bone. Now, I'm not a pro. I just kind of work it along one side and then cut around the knob to release one end of the bone. So hold that end of the bone up and just lightly cut down along the bone the best you can to save as much of the meat as you can. Then once that bone is removed, lastly, I just like to square off the top with this cartilage chunk is, and that's it. It only takes like a minute or two once you get the hang of it. Dry browning the thighs is as simple as sprinkling salt over them and letting them store in the fridge overnight. Now, this is going to help internally season the meat and also dries the skin out, which is going to let us get a better sear. Again, not absolutely necessary, but highly recommended. The next day, when you're ready for dinner, first preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to get some sweet potatoes ready for roasting that I'll be serving with my chicken and then tossing those in the oven before I actually cook the chicken. So while those begin to roast, let's cook the chicken. Set a carbon or cast iron pan over medium high heat and add just a tiny coating of oil. Now place the chicken right in the pan as it's warming up and it will begin to render plenty of fat on its own, but adding just a tiny coating of oil does help it in case of stickage. Again, you could season this now with any sorts of spices, but I'm actually gonna go the pan sauce route, which I'll show you in just a bit. So let the chicken thigh cook until that skin releases easily from the pan. And if it is sticking, you can just turn the heat up a bit and wait a bit longer. It will eventually lift off and it should be crisp and golden brown. Now, instead of cooking these all in the pan, we're just going to throw that entire thing into the oven where we also have the sweet potatoes from earlier. Pretty convenient. Let the chicken cook until it's roughly 175 degrees internal. And once cooked, these should be looking beautiful. And we're going to set these aside to rest and make our lemon pepper pan sauce. So we only need a little bit of that fat left over in the pan and set that over medium heat. Then toss in some crushed garlic along with about 30 cranks of black pepper before letting that toast for 30 seconds. Next, come in with the chicken stock, which is the base of the sauce, which will begin to reduce. Now, to help this thicken up, add some stock to a bit of cornstarch and then pour that slurry in and it will immediately start to thicken. Now, just let that sauce reduce until it's at the desired consistency, and it should leave a slight path behind when swiped with a spoon. Last step, add a bunch of freshly grated lemon zest, a squeeze of lemon juice, and if some fresh parsley, stir that up and give this a taste. To serve our chicken, first I made a bed of the roasted and slightly crisp sweet potatoes. Next, I placed some pan sauce over the top of those potatoes before placing the sliced chicken down and finally adding some more of that pan sauce over the top. Let's eat. I mean, just look at that. Absolutely delicious. So technique number three, another absolutely killer one. Um, such a good plate and again, maybe good for a small family dinner or if you're having friends over and you want to make something kind of nice or feel nice or like that it was a lot more work, but this is actually such an easy dish. You know, it's really just searing it in the beginning and then throwing it in the oven. You can get those roasted vegetables going too. Um, so it's a lot of hands-off activity. And then you really just got to make your pan sauce um, however you want to. Again, another technique that's very fun. Maybe I'll do a video on pan sauces at some point, but fun to mess around with. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments below which of the techniques is your favorite. And yeah, hopefully that gives you some inspiration on how to use chicken thighs. 
Again, one of the best cuts for the home cooks to learn how to cook. So that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace, y'all.